I'm meeting a guy at uh, a place where they make ice rinks and stuff and uh, we're getting a piece of glass to use as a table so this client contacted me to discuss making an oversized coffee table for a church use group so I figured we should meet up someplace and discuss and he figured why not right at the glass place he had a contact there uh, this company uh, takes on huge contracts and often has decent sized heavy duty glass offsets that can't be used for much after some time looking around at some of the offcuts, we chose a piece that we thought would work. It had to be big enough uh, and small enough at the same time. So far, I hadn't seen the room that this table was going to go in, and I didn't really know what to design for the table base. All I knew was going to have a glass top because that's what we had. Uh, I like to make stuff and reclaim and upcycle as much as possible, and this piece of glass was pretty bitchin', so I was gonna make it work one way or another. Once I was actually in the room, I realized this was gonna be trickier than I first thought. There was unused roughed in plumbing sticking out of the floor, so having a glass top would make this very visible and ugly. I quickly laid out an outline of the coffee table around the plumbing, and we discussed other potential designs. He suggested that we should just make a crate coffee table, and that way it would hide everything, but just put a glass top on top. He had a whole bunch of reclaimed wood in the back of the church that I was able to use, so that would work perfect. I'll be honest, on the way home, I was pretty bummed about making a crate coffee table. They're uninteresting, everyone makes them, there's almost nothing unique about any of them, and adding only a glass piece to the top was not going to change much for the aesthetic. After a little thought, I knew how I would make this crate coffee table something that's actually unique and something that they would be proud to own. I decided to take a flight to LA where they have the La Brea tar pits. I was there before and I decided that that would be some good inspiration. When I arrived I basically took some pictures of the crates that I saw around the grounds. I also had a look at the active digs. I wanted to see the colors and the textures of the fossils trapped in the tar as much as I could. The tools that they used, different things like that. And also there's a bunch of tar and asphalt seeping up from the ground that's often bubbling and stuff as pressure is being released. I wanted that to be trapped into my build as well. After my quick visit there, I flew back home and made my way back into the workshop and decided to get started on the build. The crates at the Libre tar pits are serving as inspiration more so than an exact instruction on how I'm going to do my build. The whole reason that the crates uh, actually exist over at the Libre tar pits, to my greatest understanding, is that the art museum or gallery or whatever it is next door was building their underground parking structure and found a whole bunch of fossils. So rather than lose all this history to construction, they hired a company to come dig out chunks of the land and then have it created up for later analysis. This build is kind of out there for a coffee table. It's not to everyone's taste, but I like to think that uh, most people wouldn't mind at least looking at it and being like, oh, that's kind of cool. So that's kind of what I'm going with. I'm kind of going by the seat of my pants here, seeing what works and what doesn't work for this build. I like to make out of reclaimed, upcycled, found, scrap, and the like type material. So for this build, I was lucky enough to be supplied with most of the bulk of the material. And then I just had some leftover 2x4s and stuff that I could use to make the rest of what was required of the build. The whole construction of the box is very basic. I just basically made a box and then I had to put a bed in it and then eventually I had to brace it up to get rid of the warpage from the old reclaimed wood that I used for the outside crate look. 
This whole build is pretty rough and tough and in no way is a fine woodworking project. Uh, I would never classify myself as a fine woodworker or really a woodworker. I just make stuff out of wood, more or less. Uh, there are though some measurements that I had to take into account. It had to be able to roll over the uh, capped plumbing sticking out of the floor in the youth room as well as be able to roll out of the door so that they could use the whole room for something else. Those familiar with the Librea tar pits may uh, notice that I'm using a little artistic license on this build. I'm not exactly sure what all animals and stuff were found in the pits themselves, but I do know there was a lot of saber-toothed cats, probably the most were the cats, based on the amount of skulls they had on their one wall in the actual museum. I've decided to do something else. To mimic the properties and nature of the La Brea Tar Pit dig sites and crates, I'm basically just experimenting with some drywall mud mixed with black paint as a base. I'm not exactly sure what the inside of a crate looks like, but I did see some uh, mounds of tar in the museum with the fossils sticking out and stuff, so I'm basically going off of that. I made a wooden armature of a uh, rough Velociraptor inspired by Jurassic Park. I basically wanted there to be something that was recognizable for most people. And most people know what the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park is. As I was creating the layers put into my uh, sculptural coffee table here, I uh, was thinking of how I could make it look natural. So uh, when the mud was all wet and stuff, I would just add uh, sawdust and dirt and all sorts of different uh, bits here and there to kind of mimic what uh, the tar pits look like. Back in whenever these animals had perished in the tar, they weren't exactly clean about it, so uh, when they dug them up, you can see all sorts of different uh, debris in the tar, and it actually looks pretty cool. So I kind of wanted to mimic that into uh, this build. After creating the faux organic aesthetic with the sawdust and dirt and stuff, my next challenge was to create the bubbles. While the mud was still wet, I blowtorched it which boiled the water in the mud creating bubbles that looked like they were frozen in the tar as it cooled. I'm not sure if the bubbles actually show up in the actual crate, so I'm trying to create the illusion that as the tar was cooling, the shape of the bubbles kind of got trapped in the tar and that's what we're seeing. I took some of my tools that looked similar to the ones I had spied over at the pits there and painted them black and uh, another color to kind of mimic the tarry look and then use the same paint to paint the table itself. I'm using a shiny black and then another shiny reddish brown to kind of give the look of an oily, slicky look on top. That paired with the sacrificial tools that I chose to pair with this build, I think will give it just that much more appeal. So I never really take any commissions that uh, put uh, many restrictions on design. I like to build what I like to build and luckily for this one, uh, the only restrictions were that it needed to be certain dimensions, which made sense. And I was able to kind of just do whatever I wanted with uh, what he gave me, which was the glass and the wood. And I think I made a product that is pretty unique. If you enjoyed this project video, please consider subscribing. I don't do the YouTube thing too often, but I will try to do more of it. Follow me over on my Instagram, at Ushitat. That's at U-S-I-H-T-A-T. All the links and stuff will be in the uh, credits. Thanks for watching.